first case is a 26 year old woman evaluated for headache. Carefully look at the optic disc. What is the most likely finding? We will go back. What is the most likely finding? What are the differential diagnosis? What are the modes of investigations for this case? And what is the prognosis? So, we will go to the answers. So, the answer for the first question will be elevated optic disc suggestive of optic nerve head drusen showing calcification. We will look at the figure again. You can see here there is tiny calcific bodies which are suggestive of calcification and drusen. What are the other causes? Differential diagnosis. The other causes of pseudo disc edema are myelinated nerve fibers, hypermetropic disc, morning glory anomaly, etc. So, these are all some of the other examples of pseudo disc edema. Morning glory disc resembling a morning glory flower and myelinated nerve fibers because of the, you can see the feathery pattern here because the myelination occurs at the nerve fiber layer level. What are the investigative modalities? B scan to show calcification, OCT will show autofluorescence and CT scan may be done. So, this is a B scan which shows a spike here which corresponds to the calcification here. OCT shows an autofluorescence here because of the calcification and even though we should not be going to the level of a CT scan to detect a drusen, occasionally it may be done mistakenly and in one such case drusen was detected in the CT scan. You can see a round calcification here in the CT scan. So, these are all the modalities of investigations. Prognosis is generally good except some patients may develop field defects like infronasal defects which are very trivial field defects. The next case is a 50 year old female who has a painless loss of vision in the right eye of 2 weeks duration. Note the painless. Visual acuity was 3 by 60, coloration was defective and there is a relative afferent pupillary defect in the right eye. Fundus in the left eye was normal. So, we have a little elderly woman with a painless loss of vision and with a defective visual acuity and a relative afferent pupillary defect. Now, we will see what is the fundus of the right eye. So, this is the fundus of the right eye and this is the normal fundus of the left eye. Carefully look at this disc picture and we will see the questions that follow. What is the most likely diagnosis? What are the differential diagnosis? Comment on the normal left eye with respect to the cup disc ratio. You can see the normal left eye, but it has got some significant finding which has a bearing on the diagnosis of the other eye and what are the investigations to be done. So, what is the most likely diagnosis? So, this is a case of a non-arthritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. Why anterior ischemic optic neuropathy and why not an optic neuritis? We saw that this is a painless defective vision whereas optic neuritis usually has a painful defective vision and the pain is aggravated on eye movements. So, the differential diagnosis will be optic neuritis as well as an arthritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So, we have seen how to differentiate this from optic neuritis which has got pain and how is it different from arthritic AYN? Arthritic AYN is usually seen in the very elderly, they may have dilated superficial tender superficial temporal arteries and ESRC reactive protein may be raised. And this is a relatively younger woman, not a very elderly woman, just a 50 year old woman and it falls outside the category of arthritic AOM. So, what is the relevance of the other normal eye? The other eye has got a negligible cup disc ratio which is termed as a disc at risk. We will go back to the previous slide. You can see here this cup disc ratio is a very small cup disc ratio. What is the meaning of this? A small cup disc ratio means that there is a small tight scleral canal which means the million axons of the optic nerve are packed into this small scleral canal and they are prone for a compartment syndrome like picture. So, these discs are called as disc at risk. So, if this disc has a small cup disc ratio or a disc at risk, this affected eye also would have the same cup disc ratio and so this eye has got a non arthritic ischemic optic neuropathy due to ischemia due to compartment syndrome. So, what are the investigations to be done? Basic blood workup including blood sugar, 
a lipid profile, ESRC reactive protein to rule out arteritic AON and fluorescent angiography will show a sectoral hypofluorescence. So, this is another patient with non arteritic AON, we can, we can see here there is a pallor sectorally and the fluorescent angiogram showed a sectoral hypofluorescence. The next case is a 15 year old girl presented with painless defective vision in the right eye of 2 months duration. So, it is a slowly progressive defective vision. So, these are all our systemic findings you note here as well as note here. There is a skin finding please note it. So, what is the finding shown here in the systemically? What will be the ocular finding corresponding to this which is causing the vision loss? What is the likely systemic syndromic association and what are the treatment modalities? So, think about it. What is the finding shown here? So, she has classic cafeolae spots. So, what is associated with cafeolae spots ophthalmologically? Optic nerve glioma may be seen. So, that is responsible for the vision loss. What is the syndromic association is neurofibromatosis type 2. What is the finding seen? She has cafeolae spots. What is the association ophthalmologically to this cafeolae spots? These patients will have optic nerve glioma. What is the syndromic association? Neurofibromatosis type 1. So, if there is something called type 1, there should be something called type 2 neurofibromatosis. What is type 2 neurofibromatosis? It is usually associated with bilateral optic nerve sheath meningiomas as well as bilateral CP angle tumors. So, this is type 1. What are the treatment modalities? If the vision is good, we can safely observe the patient, periodically review them and probably do fields in both the eyes every 6 months or so and do a neuroimaging every 1 year or so and if it is not progressing, we can safely observe the patient. If it is progressing, it can go behind and involve the chiasm and eventually involve the other eye also. So, chemotherapy or radiotherapy may be tried. So, this is a radiological finding you can see bilateral fusiform swelling, optic nerve glioma with a chiasmal involvement. The next is a 30 year old woman who noticed inequality in the size of her pupils. Now, carefully look at the slit lamp finding here. When the light is shown into the eye, what is happening here? Just note that point. Now, what is the slit lamp finding seen? What is the likely diagnosis? What are the other ocular findings that may be seen and how will you confirm the diagnosis? So, what is the slit lamp finding seen? It is vermiform contraction of the pupil. So, what is the likely diagnosis is ADs tonic pupil. What are the other ocular findings that will be seen in this condition? There will be poor contraction to light reflex and a slow tonic contraction to near reflex. So, there is a light near dissociation which means it is not reacting well to light. However, it will slowly react, react to accommodation reflex. How will you test it? We test it by what is called as a denivation super sensitivity by means of a very weak dilute pilocarpine 0.125 percent pilocarpine. So, how do we prepare this weak pilocarpine? Commercially, it is available as a 2 percent pilocarpine and you will have to dilute it 8 times. You take 0.5 ml. So, how will you diagnose this? We diagnose this by means of what is called as denervation super sensitivity by means of a very weak pilocarpine 0.125 percent pilocarpine. So, how do you prepare this 0.125 percent pilocarpine? Commercially, it is available as a 2 percent pilocarpine. Take 0.5 ml of it and dilute it. Another with another 7 ml of artificial tear substitutes, you will get approximately 0.125 percent pilocarpine. So, what is this denervation super sensitivity? So, this denervation super sensitivity is occurs because of denervation and it may take 1 to 2 weeks to develop. A normal pupil will not constrict to this weak pilocarpine, whereas a denervated pupil, such as this in this ADS pupil, will constrict to 0.125 percent pilocarpine. And by doing this test, if it constricts, it likely shows that it has got ADS pupil. Please remember that denervation does not develop immediately after the onset of ADS pupil, it takes one or two weeks' time. So, if you are seeing the patient immediately after the onset of the illness, then this test may be negative and this is a point you have to keep in mind. Always remember to put 
one drop in the control i normalize also to make sure that is not constricting